You're up, Phil. Oh, is is there? Am I reading this, or is there organ accompaniment for this? Or you're playing the music that Andy sent you, and oh, like the actual okay, and singing the hymn. Okay. <laughs> Is there an intro verse, Andy, or like um, when we're physically present, or should I start with the uh, first verse? There's a full intro verse on every single hymn. Okay, perfect.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. you let us pray almighty god whose son our savior jesus christ is the light of the world grant that your people illumined by your word and sacraments may shine with the radiance of christ's glory that he may be known worshiped and obeyed to the ends of the earth through jesus christ our lord who with you in the holy spirit lives and reigns one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people shall take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink 
from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Here ends the psalm. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the Spirit through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the workings of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hear the cry thy 
gospel according to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, he did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Law and order. One of these bombs goes off in our city. Is Not Eden's gate, but freedom lures us down a trail of skulls where men forever crush the dreamers, never the dream, writes the Reverend Polly Murray in her book, Dark Testament. As our nation approaches the day that we honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., his dream of racial equality, economic justice, and freedom for all people seems like a national daydream and political slumbering. Yet we pause to ponder the vision of Dr. King, how far we have come, how far we still have to go. What will it take to allow God's abundance to be transformed, to, God's abundance to transform our attitudes, our actions, and our wills. While the vision and mission of Dr. King has become simultaneous with the civil rights movement, let us not forget the women, the matriarchs, the foremothers, and the activists who were cooking with grease long before King jumped into the civil rights frying pan. Countless women marched, they opened their homes as headquarters for meetings and for strategy sessions. They walked the talk of the protest path. So here's a roll call of some of the women from various educational, social, geographic, and sexual backgrounds who were pivotal in setting the civil rights movement stage for Dr. King. Let us honor and remember Ella Baker, Ruby Bridges, Claudette Colvin, Edna Griffin, Fannie Lou Hammer, Mahala Jackson, Coretta Scott King, Polly Murray, Ruby Sales, Mary Lewis Smith, and Ida B. Wells, to name just a few of the women who distributed flyers, organized, sang, marched, prayed, planned, and provided shelter, whose names may never be recorded in a full telling of our civil rights history. 
Sexism does not play fair, nor desire to follow the rules of equality and transparency. However, we are here today because of the sacrifices of dedicated women of vision and action who largely remain invisible in our history. But we can remember and honor the women behind the man, those who were part of changing history. And there were also women behind the man Jesus. In the year of our Lord 33, Jesus was invited to a wedding in the small village of Cana. As John describes in his gospel, the word of God told to us in the story of the wedding at Cana comes as an epiphany, a manifestation, a showing off to the world of who Jesus is and what he is about. It is also a word of grace to us who live in a world of diminishing economic, social, racial, and gender equality. 1,989 years ago, history was changed by the Jesus event of the miracle of water being changed into wine. An ancient legend says that Mary was the aunt of the bride and might have been the person responsible for the wedding at Cana, which would certainly explain her desire to have everything be just right. When the wine runs out at the wedding, Mary approaches Jesus and tells him of the situation. Jesus tries to say that this is really none of his concern and he has another plan for revealing who he is. Mary seems to ignore that comment and assumes Jesus is going to be a good Jewish boy and listen to his mother, and eventually he does. <laughs> now, no one would have died of thirst if Jesus had not acted in Cana, but there is no doubt that people would have suffered. In the culture of that day, running out of wine was at a wedding was not a social, a minor social inconvenience. It was a major breach of the demands of hospitality. It would have been a disgrace and it would have been devastating for the couple. Everywhere that they went for the rest of their married life, they would be known, ridiculed and talked about. The shame of the lack of hospitality would have marked the bride and groom and the whole family's reputation would have been tainted by the memory of empty glasses too early in the party. When Jesus realized the shame that could have overshadowed this young couple's new life together, he had a decision to make. He could do nothing and stick by his original plan about when he would reveal to everyone who he really was, or he could pivot, change his timetable and act now thus revealing himself. Jesus acted, the wedding continued, and the bride and groom were saved from a life of shame. This story is not really about the bride and groom, however, it is about Jesus. This is the first time that Jesus, the Messiah, is made known publicly to his disciples and to all the other guests gathered there. It is important to note that he did not reveal himself according to his own plans, but in response to real and important human need. Jesus's first manifestation of his glory, the very first of his signs, was not for or about Jesus. He didn't throw a great big Jesus of Nazareth and his first miracle party or posted on any kind of social media platform. He didn't invite everyone in, in the village and then perform a great miracle for them. Instead, the signs of his calling and of his identity were drawn out of him, not by his own plans and schedule, but by the needs of those around him. What it means and what it looks like for Jesus to be the son of God 
is seen in his response to the realities of human life and need. Because of Jesus' act of abundance, that day would be remembered not with the wagging of heads about the family who did not properly prepare for the celebration, but rather it would be remembered as the night when exquisite wine, which never gave out, was abundant at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. What might appear like a simple miracle story seems to have a deep and rich meaning. This is a story of God ensuring that community is not broken. It is a demonstration of God's abundance in giving to meet our needs. What is experienced at the wedding is a manifestation of God's grace. God's love for us is always about caring for the community and providing us with what we need. Maybe not with what we want, but always what we need. God's vision of community and abundance is central to our understanding of who we are created to be as Christians. An understanding of God's vision of community and abundance calls into question the diminishing resources we are experiencing economically and environmentally, as well as ruptures in relationships due to differences in opinions, in ideologies, politics, race, nationalities, and sexuality. The bottom line is that there is enough to go around, enough goodwill, enough civility, money, food, homes, habitats, clean water, medical care. There is enough for all to share equally if we under understand ourselves as being created in community with other humans and all other species. In a society deeply rooted in individualism, this is a hard sell. And we do not seem to be making significant progress in creating decisions for the greater common good in our own day and time. In the epistle lesson from the Corinthians this morning, Paul is speaking to the Christians in Corinth of the first century. He is observing some behavior among them that is very selfish, petty, and sometimes evil. At the center of it, as is so often true when religion goes bad, there was a strong sense of who is best and a strong sense of mine. They were having a variety of different spiritual experiences and encounters with God, which in themselves were probably just fine. But the people of Corinth were getting possessive and competitive about all of that. They were saying things like, this gift is mine. This way of doing things is mine. This spirituality is mine. What Paul says to them is what Jesus discovered when the wine gave out. What Paul says to them is what you have is not for you. What you have is for others. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. This is a fundamental truth about the nature and purpose of God then and now. What you have is not for you. What you have is not even about you, not really. The folks in Corinth could never get their religion right, indeed get their lives right, until they realized that what they had was not for them or about them. It was given to them so they could use it to give and to strengthen the community of God's people, to help and to create a world of equity for all creatures, great and small. What we have is not for us, not really. All that we have is a gift. It is a gift from God given with abundance of love and grace. 
so that we might share what we have to further God's kingdom of peace, harmony, equity, justice, mercy, and compassion for all of creation. We are not created to live closed in upon ourselves as greedy individuals, self-protective, possessive, and self-righteous. We have no entitlement. It's not about us or what is ours. It is all about God's love and grace and how we can personally experience that and then share it. When we try to live as individuals and islands unto ourselves, we impoverish ourselves. We run out of our own resources and we are not faithful to our Christian selves and the promises made at our baptism. There was a man who we will honor on Monday, tomorrow, who understood something about equity, justice, and the common good, and led a whole community of people who wanted to make this the reality. He understood the vision of the kingdom of God, and he knew why God had been manifest in the person of Jesus. Martin Luther King Jr. understood the abundance of God's love and resources, and he understood that they were to be shared equally among God's people. He felt convicted to use his gifts, talents, and his faith to try and make this a reality. While Martin Luther King Jr. did not change water into wine, he did change words into the new wine of commitment. He did gather thousands to hear him and they were fed. He did raise those whose lives were decaying in death, the garbage collectors. He did proclaim to the educated Nicodemuses of America that they needed to be born again in mind and spirit. He did stand on the shoulders of many grassroots activists, both women and men, who spread the gospel of civil rights for all. He did raise up the dead daughters of Birmingham, speaking of them in an unforgettable letter to the white clergy from the tomb of his jail cell in that city. He did lift up to us a cup of everlasting life that we can drink from even today. In his own way, Dr. King sought to turn shame and oppression into equity and justice, to return our society to the community that God created it to be, a place of peace, mercy, and justice for all. May we use our God-given gifts and talents to reveal the living Christ, to share the abundance of God's grace and love, and act to bring equity and justice to the whole community of God's people and all of creation so that the history of our country might be changed through our actions. Amen. Amen. Not yet. Not now. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. 
For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As God's chosen and priestly people, let us pray for the needs of the church and the world, saying, O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of God, loved wholly by God, and sent to be light in the world. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and for those who serve us in governments, that all people may work for peace and justice. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted, shunned, neglected, or rejected because of prejudice, that they may find welcoming love in our community of faith. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples and their families, that they may share the joy and love of God for all. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church community, that we may recognize the gifts we have received from the Spirit and use them freely for the good of all. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church community, including the sick, especially John, the dying, the deceased, especially Pauline and Greg, and those who mourn. O oh, gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, lover of the human family and helper of all in need, hear the prayers we offer in faith and strengthen us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you opposing your will in our lives. We've denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Sue, you're muted. Well, thank you. I guess you didn't hear that. <laughs> Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of a star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the Jordan River, pour out that spirit on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. May God by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. with you and also with you and this concludes our service this morning just want to remind you that our liturgy comes from uh, the, the supplemental material of the episcopal church enriching our worship and the prayers of the people were from intercessions for the christian people so thank you all for being with us this morning and we will be moving into our coffee hour time. So you are welcome to unmute and participate in that as you have time and are able. <clears throat>